get heaps of questions from guys about bike recommendations. Despite <laughs> constantly saying there are a gazillion things I'd need to know about this situation first. And I am hopelessly unqualified to make recommendations anyway. Sigh. Anyway, many ask me if they should buy a 250 or 300 two-stroke. Get a test ride, it's the only way you will know for sure. But if you want a dodgy opinion from a dirt riding muppet, hang around. So up ahead is Pete on his 250. It's all he will buy. And he often tells us to sell our 300s and get 250s when we learn how to ride properly. Of course, we tell him he is a skirt wearing Nancy boy who will sell his princess pony 250 when he mans up and grows a pair. So how do they compare? Well, two strokes have come a long way in recent years, especially the 250s. The Europeans are really getting some serious low down grunt from the smaller smokers, which has narrowed the difference considerably with the bigger 300s. But the 250 is still a favourite for guys who like a lively engine and like to rev more without killing themselves. The smaller engine revs up faster, usually a bit higher, and despite having less low down grunt, in most brands the 250s are putting out the same top end power as the 300s. For less experienced riders, the 250 will probably be safer and less tiring too. The mild power in the low to mid range revs will keep you out of trouble and if you adjust your power valve, you can soften that hit of power you usually get with the 250s as it gets into the power band. Mind you, our research indicates that plenty of experienced riders love the hit of the power band when you change the power valve setting from mild to wild. Your previously tame beast is suddenly wheel spinning uncontrollably. Front wheel is pouring the sky. Your arms are being pulled out of their socket. And your eyeballs are pushed back into your brain. If this is your sort of caper, then the 250 can be a winner for fast, experienced riders too. Another alleged advantage of the 250 is less rotational mass. A few years ago, Stephen Hawking sent us this easy equation that explains everything. The idea is all the moving bits in your engine tend to keep the bike upright. So a bike with a smaller engine should be easier to tip over into corners. Me, <laughs> I'm not good enough to pick the difference. I can tell the difference with heavier four strokes where there's a lot more rotational mass, but the 250 and 300 smokers, no. However, plenty of experienced faster riders say they can tell the difference. Get a test ride, see what you think. Interestingly, some riders say this makes the 250 less tiring to ride, but then others say the same about the 300 because it requires less rider input with clutch slipping and gear changing. <laughs> Who knows? A major point for many, the price difference. In some brands, the 250 is up to $1,000 cheaper. It costs exactly the same to make, but the manufacturers know everybody wants to ride the 300s, the bikes the top hard enduro riders use. So they make the 250 much cheaper in order to sell some. Now the funny thing is that often the complete 300 upgrade kit is around $1,000 too. So you can start with the 250, then later on spend your savings on an upgrade to a 300. Sweet.
Okay, this all makes the 250 sound pretty good. But me, I love 300s. Lugging around at low revs, less gear changes, less clutch slipping, and grunting up hills effortlessly. And you'll probably get a bit further before top end rebuilds. Riders were raving when the first 300s came out, saying they were like riding a four stroke, but so much lighter and better handling. Well, the 300 is all about a linear power curve. Heaps of low down grunt, same in the mid range, same in the top end. I love it for our slow technical riding. At low revs, a small blip of throttle lifts the front wheel so easily for obstacles. It's almost impossible to stall as long as you have some throttle applied. And there's just way less clutch work needed compared to the 250. You can see why it's the bike of choice for hard enduros and technical terrain. And then when the track opens up, you can just go for the higher gear and chug around like a turbocharged tractor all day. Ah, epic stuff. So that's my two cents worth. I should also mention the two strokes are so tunable nowadays. The power valves are just getting better and better at totally changing engine characteristics. The mapping switches are also improving, especially on the Shercos, where you would swear you are on a completely different bike when you flip the switch. There's a range of aftermarket pipes to get extra grunt or top end. And in the KTMs, you can fit the motocross heads for increased compression or send your existing head off to get modified. It's all a far cry from the old deadly peaky two-stroke beasts. Those were the ultimate way to commit suicide. Go in peace, my brethren and sisterin.